What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Today, today, today we have the Night Force Attacker 1 to 8 F1 and we are going to compare it to the Collis K18i. I know these are different optics for different purposes, uh, but when I bought this Collis, this Collis is mine. These are the two different optics I was debating which one I wanted to get. Did I want the Collis? Did I want the Night Force? Obviously, I went ahead and got the Collis, but the Night Force is my buddy Max's. He's a good local dude, good friend of mine. He let me borrow it for the review, so let me say thank you to Max and let's get right into it. Um, we're going to talk about the diopter first. We always start at the back, work our way forward. The Collis is a very standard diopter. It's on the back of the optic. Spins left to right. If you don't know, a diopter will focus the reticle for your eyes, for your eyesight. That's what a diopter does. The Collis has a good range of motion. Very standard. Nothing too crazy. Now, the uh, Night Force is definitely a, a unique diopter. And the reason I say it's unique is when you spin the rear of the... Uh, optic here, the low power variable optic, the, that's how you adjust the magnification range. So that the whole back of the optic is for the magnification range. What you have to do is there's a second ring here that you have to loosen up and that will uh, adjust the diopter. So it's a little bit different. And that's why a lot of people with these night forces put these wraps on here to make sure that diopter doesn't come loose. Once they set it for their eyesight, they wrap it. Not only does that help you with the magnification, uh, of, uh, of adjusting the magnification by grabbing the whole back of the optic, it also uh, keeps that diopter in place so it doesn't adjust it on you. Um, so, a little different. I don't really see major pros, cons to it, but it's definitely a little bit different. Now, the eye relief on both of these optics is 3.7 inches. That's what they're rated. And I would say, not that I can measure that, but I would say that's just about even 3. Point, uh, about uh, accurate, about 3.7 inches. I box, so eye relief is how far you can get away from the optic. I box is up, down, left, right on the optic. And they're both very, very good. At eight times magnification, I do think the Collis is a little bit better. A little bit better, not a lot. Um, I definitely think the Collis is a little bit better I box at max magnification. Now, Clarity, glass clarity. They both have great glass. Um, I know this is going to upset a lot of Night, Fox, Night Force folks. The glass is really, really clear on both of them. It's beautiful. I'm not complaining at all. Um, I think the Collis glass is a little bit better. I think the, the colors, when you look through it, are a little bit more natural. Like if I look at my through the optic with my right eye and then look around with my left eye, the colors are exactly the same. It doesn't look any different. Where the Night Force looks a tiny, tiny, tiny bit different. I know I'm being nitpicky. I just, I'm trying to be as accurate and uh, detailed as possible. Now, if you're not looking at both of these at the same time, you are not going to notice this. Not at all. The glass on both of them is absolutely beautiful. And the other thing I want to say is I did have a uh, like a dozen of my buddies look through these and not everybody agreed with me. So I'm thinking different eyes, different eyesight may see it differently, but the majority, probably eight out of the 12 people, I'm guessing, said that the Collis looked a little tiny bit better than the Night Force, but that is some nitpicky stuff. So magnification ring, like I said, the Night Force, the entire rear of the optic is, is, uh, is how you adjust the magnification. It's really quick, fast, just to grab the whole thing and spin it in a tactical situation, a self-defense situation. If you need to adjust it quick, that's an advantage for the Night Force. You can just grab it and spin it. With that said, I do think it's a little bit too stiff. Now, it does come with the speed lever, which is nice. And if you're just trying to adjust it using the speed lever, it's, it's a little difficult. You really need to use that, um, that whole body of the magnification to make that adjustment. Uh, with that, also with the Night Force, the knurling on there is very, very nice. The Collis is just as smooth, but there's a lot less tension, a lot less effort to adjust that magnification range. It's a lot, lot easier. I do, that's one of the things that made me go with the Collis, and I prefer that. Now, there's also two different size speed levers. The Collis is kind of, this one here is their three-gun version, so it has this ginormous speed lever on here but it does also come with a smaller one. If you don't want the huge one on there, you can put the uh, the smaller one on there. Uh, one big difference between the optics and the one thing I like a little bit more about the, uh, I give the advantage of the Night Force, is the Night Force is a first 
focal plane optic where the collis is a second focal plane optic. Now, what that means, the second focal plane optic, uh, which is the collis, is as you go through the magnification ring range, the reticle does not change size. So some people like that, that it stays the same size, but the holdovers that we're gonna talk about in a second for windage and elevation um, are only accurate at max magnification. So if you're at four or six or anything else besides eight, those holdovers are not gonna be exact. Now there's still guidelines, you can still roughly use them, but it's not going to be exact. Second focal plate optics are usually a little bit less expensive. Not always. Uh, the advantage of a first focal plane optic is that your holdovers for windage and elevation work at any magnification. So if you're not quite at eight, if you're at five or six or whatever, you can still use those holdovers accurately at any distance. As you go through the uh, magnification range, the uh, reticle will change size. So at one time, the night force really looks like a red dot. It's very, very similar. Obviously, low power variable optics don't have as good as an eye relief or an eye box as a red dot, but the night force and the Vortex Razor 1 to 10 are going to be the closest things you can get to a red dot with still having the extra magnification. So, one time it's nice, it works just like a red dot. Max magnification, uh, the reticle gets nice and big. Very, very useful. Um, well, let's get into the reticles now. They're both MRAD reticles, which I like. MRAD is great. At 100 yards, it is, uh, one MRAD is 3.6 inches at 100 yards. I cannot speak. When you use your windage and elevation adjustments on these bad boys, each click is 0.1 MRAD. MRAD reticles are detailed. They are great. The uh, I'm gonna pull both of the reticles up here on the screen. And again, different uses. The night force is, I hate using the term tactical, self-defense, duty, military, law enforcement, whatever. It, the reticle is a lot more useful. It has a lot more holdovers. It has hold unders, hold overs. It has a lot more windage, elevation. The range is huge. I mean, it's, the reticle is very, very, very useful. Um, the other thing I like about it is when you turn on the illumination, the only thing that lights up is the center dot very small center dots, like 0.7 MOA, and the donut of death around it. That's it, not the whole reticle, which I like, I prefer. The Collis still has a very good, very useful reticle. Not as many holdovers uh, for, for windage, d definitely not. And it do does not have any hold unders as well, if that's something you care about. Now, when you turn the illumination on, you get two dots that light up. I don't know if you like that or not. You may or may not. The top one uh, appears to be a little bit brighter to me. Um, I like the Vortex Razor the most. That one dot that lights up and that's it, nothing else. That's my favorite one. Um, but the Night Frost is a close second and then the Collis is okay. Now speaking of the illumination on the Night Force here, it has uh, 10 different brightness settings and it has the off positions in between each brightness setting, which I am a very, very big fan of. I would just stage this in between eight and nine or nine or 10 or whatever brightness you want. And if you need to turn the illumination on quickly, it doesn't matter whether you go up or down, maybe a little tiny bit too bright or not quite as bright for you, but it's quick, it's easy, it's fast. I like it. And again, just the center dot which is uh, the center dot is 0.2 MRAD or 0.7 MOA. Uh, and then the circle around it is a four MRAD half circle around it. It's absolutely daylight bright. It's one of the few low power variable optics that is daylight bright. Again, I'm gonna call out the uh, Vortex Razor. That's another low power variable optic off the top of my head that's daylight bright, but most of them are not truly daylight bright like a red dot. Um, the most unique part of the night force, and it's kind of weird to me, is it has two night vision settings, and I don't fully understand why it has two night vision settings. I was going to wait until the night force review comes out before I, I record this review, because I asked in that review, the dedicated review for, why does it have night vision setting? I don't get it, I find it weird. Um, the low power variable optic don't have it as good as an eye relief as a red dot, so getting behind this and under this with nods at the proper distance, I don't get it. It's strange to me. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe people are using like a clip on or something. I don't know. You tell me. I find it weird. Whatever. It takes a 2032 battery. No issues there. The Collis. When you turn it on again, there's two dots that um, that illuminate. 
Um, it is not quite as bright as the Night Force. It's very close. It's bright. It's good. It's one of the better low power variable optics, but I think the Night Force, even with fresh batteries, is just a tiny, tiny bit better. Now, being it's made for competition, the um, adjustment is a continuous, uh, continuous knob. There's no positions, no off position. So most low power variable optics go one click, two click, three click, or one off, two off, uh, three off, etc., etc. This is just a continuous movement. So if you want something just a tiny bit brighter or a tiny bit dimmer, it gives you the ability to control it a little bit more than a preset determined brightness for you. So again, I prefer the Night Force, but if you are in a competition or hunting or something like that and you want a little bit more precise controls, then the uh, Collis may be the one for you. All right, windage and elevation. They are both capped. Um, turrets, which is good. They are both resettable. So once you get your zero, you get everything sighted in the way you want. You can uh, unscrew the turret. You can bring it back to the number zero. So if you have to adjust your windage and elevation on the fly, you know where your original sight in is to go back to. I think that makes sense. I hope it does. Now the Collis has a small advantage in one of the caps. It does hold a spare battery if you care. That 2032 battery, you do have a spare battery inside the collis now on the back of the night force it does show you which direction is up and which direction is right so again if you are uh, dialing your windage and elevation on the fly you don't have to look high up on the optic you can kind of just look at the back of it and you'll see that up that right uh, helps you uh, make those adjustments a little bit faster they're both very very tactile they're both very very audible and the uh, turrets are very very stiff now I always wonder with these with cheap low power variable optics that have a lot of slop and wobble in the turrets that as you're shooting does that affect it and I don't know I've never proved it I don't know but when the, these these turrets are super super tight I'm gonna think you're gonna get a better zero more uh, precise zero and again the reticle mil reticle one mil is 3.6 inches at 100 yards and each click is 0.1 mils that is just silly. Let me put the caps back on the Night Force here. The Night Force body is 34 millimeter, so it's a bigger tube. Uh, there are quite a few tubes out there that are 34 millimeter now, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal for you. This one here is Badger Ordnance. Badger is great. I am a big fan of Badger. My man Max has the top dot on here because he is a baller. He has an aim point T2 for his top dot. He wanted something enclosed in and you can't get much better than that for a top dot. The Collis is a 30 millimeter tube. This is mine, it has a Reptilla mount and I think Reptilla and Badger make two of the best mounts. There's some good ones out there, but some of the best mounts out there. I like that both companies offer top dots. Not every company offers top dots. And for night vision, I've done a whole video dedicated on top dots compared to 45 degree offset, so I'm not gonna get into it and bore you. But having a top dot, if you're running night vision or just want a head up posture when you're shooting, the top dots are great. I am not a baller, so I have a hollow sun on top of mine. Unlike his aim point, Max is much cooler than mine. Anyway, 30 millimeter tube. Again, very, very easy to get mounts. Never, ever, ever skimp on your mounts. I'm going to pull up the dimensions, the weight, and the price. So the Collis is longer, 11.8 inches, but it's much lighter at 19 ounces. Now, does that affect durability? I have no idea. Um, I've had no problems with either one of these. That Collis has a ton of rounds through it. It's on my main night vision gun. Tons, tons, tons of rounds, and it's been good. But lighter, does it? Does heavier mean more durable? I don't know. Pricing is similar. Night Force is a couple hundred dollars more. Um, but around the same ballpark for the most part. Now the one thing I was really, really surprised about is going to be the field of view. That was one of the few things I was disappointed in the, in the Night Force. Um, have I said Night Hawk instead of Night Force yet in this video? I probably have. Alright, the Collis. At one time, it's 127 feet field of view. At eight time, it is a 16 feet field of view. Now the Night Force at one time is 96 feet and at eight time is 12 feet. That's significantly different. And that's one of the few reasons that I went with the Collis over the Night Force. Even though I prefer the reticle and the red dot-esque nature of it at one time, um, I really couldn't get past the field of view. And um, 
looking through my buddies, uh, three or four of my buddies have the collis, and I really like the way it looked. My eyes just picked up on it really well. Uh, last couple things I want to talk about. Night Force has a lifetime warranty and it's made in the States. That's another advantage the Night Force has. Kala still has a respectable 10 year warranty. No, it's not made in China. You don't need to worry about that. It is made in Sweden. Um, and Collis is somehow related, same company, Swarovski, I don't know the differences, but uh, Swarovski makes some great, great optics with great glass and the Collis is no difference. All right, testing. I'm gonna be quick here, because again, I've done dedicated videos on both of these recently, but if you're wondering what I've done, the Night Force I've had for a few months, my buddy Max went away and said, here, take this while I'm away, which was kind of cool of him. Um, I have five, six hundred rounds. I've shot it a little bit in low light. I have not done any night vision shooting. I've done uh, night vision dry fire, but not any night vision shooting. I'm sorry. Um, did a bunch of best bench rest shooting with both of these optics at the same time. One of my ranges goes 100, 200, 300 yards, and that is the longest range in Rhode Island. I know, sad, but I did a bunch of shooting uh, bench rested and prone at that range the same drill with both optics at different magnification okay let's shoot the the 100 yard target at one three five and eight whatever and then the 200 and the 300 and i just went back and forth and got rid of uh, got used to the different magnification and the same thing anytime i test a low power variable optic the first thing i do is one ups and high ready and low ready and a bunch of different drills but i do them at different magnifications so that helps you really learn the eye box the eye relief the clarity, the magnification, the uh, brightness, all those things, I'll just I'll adjust all the features, all the different things as I'm doing those drills to get as comfortable as possible. Now, like I said a few times, this Collis is mine and it has thousands of thousands of rounds and these are real thousands of rounds, not fake keyboard warrior rounds. I do shoot quite a bit. This is my main rifle, it's my night vision gun if you didn't notice the uh, mall and the Arasaka la, uh, light. This will change very, very soon. I am upgrading my night vision gun, but as of right now and for the past year or two, whatever, this has been my main squeeze. This has been in a bunch of different classes, formal classes, night vision summit. Uh, we have a lot of local night vision classes. Uh, it's been indoors, it's been outdoors. You get the point, I'm not gonna bore you. It has gone through pretty much every single drill, low light, night vision, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Thousands of rounds. It has been rock solid, and I am a big fan of it. All right, pros. Let's talk about the Night Force pros first. It is made in the U.S. Yay, yay, yay! Made in the U.S. I love, love that. It has a lifetime warranty. That is dope. That is good, good, good. Uh, the reticle is amazing. The reticle is very, very useful. It has a ton of. It has really good windage, elevation holdovers, holdovers, hold unders. Uh, when you illuminate the reticle uh, at low magnification, it looks very similar to a red dot. So it's very, very quick uh, at low magnification. And then you crank it up to eight and you have a very, very useful reticle. I like fresh focal plane because the reticle changes sizes as you go through the magnification range, which I prefer. And again, at one time, it's pretty much very much like a red dot. Um, the magnification ring, I like how the whole entire rear of the optic spins when you uh, need to change the magnification. That makes very easy, gross movements. You don't have to grab the little speed lever. You just grab the entire back of the, of the optic and you get to spin it. That is pretty cool. Cons on the Night Force. Even though I like the whole magnification setup, the magnification ring is very, very stiff. If you want to adjust it just from the speed lever, it's very, very difficult to do. So you're gonna to have to manhandle the whole back of that thing and spin it. That's what you're gonna to have to do. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is if you have a um, lens cap on here, as you, the whole rear of the optic spins, it's gonna hit the rifle and get in the way. So you really can't do a full uh, rear lens cover. Now there's some adapters you can get on there, some aftermarket support stuff, but you can't have that on there. I also don't like the field of view on the Night Force. Uh, the field of view is uh, lacking. It should be a little bit better. I don't love it. The Collis, obviously the Collis is lighter. It's a 30 millimeter tube. I didn't mention that earlier when we were talking about weight. Yes, it is a lighter optic because of that. Um, the, I like the glass a little bit more. I think it's a little bit clearer. Again, not everyone agreed with me, but I do prefer, not clearer, 
the, the coloring of it is more natural. Like everything looks exactly the same whether I'm looking through the scope or not. Um, but they both have really nice glass. If, if you didn't compare them, you probably wouldn't even notice. The magnification ring is a little bit smoother and that's kind of my pet peeve. I don't really like super stiff magnification rings. And again, most people make fun of me and say I'm being a wuss, but <laughs> that's okay. It doesn't bother me. The field of view is better. Uh, and the eye box uh, on max magnification is a little bit better, a little bit more forgiving. Now the one caveat, uh, caveat I wanna say about that, because the Collis is mine and I have thousands and thousands of rounds through it. There may be some fami some familiarity there that I'm just used to it and it's not actually that much better. I don't know, there's no way to prove it, but I tested it a whole bunch again through all those drills and it seemed to be a little bit better. Overall guys, these are both beautiful optics. Uh, they have some pros and cons. I'd be happy with either one of them. Uh, but hopefully me explaining the pros and cons helped you understand the differences and, and maybe which one is better for you if you're going to get one of these higher end Gucci uh, low, pair, low power variable optics. Both of these should definitely be on the list. Now I will put some affiliate links for both of these down in the video description. If you want to pick one up, please hook me up, use those links. More importantly, hopefully I can find you a good deal because as these things are nice, they are definitely, definitely not inexpensive. Um, I want to thank my man Max one more time for letting me borrow the Night Force Optics. Not only that, he's let me borrow this really, really nice Triac rifle, an HK MP5, all sorts of stuff. He is a good dude supporting me in the channel and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, what else do I need to talk about? Affiliate links, I already talked about that, swag. So if you want to support the channel, we have Tiberius swag, we have short sleeve shirts, we have long sleeve shirts, we have patches. You will look so damn cool. You will be beating the girls off of you with a stick if you put one of these Tiberius shirts on. My wife doesn't let me leave the house because she's afraid <laughs> I'll have to beat the girls off with a stick. No, not, not really. It's not going to happen. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's all I got. No more corny dad jokes for me. If you think I deserve it, even with my corny dad jokes, like, comment, subscribe, enable the bell, notifications, whatever. Do all those things. They help me out. It's free. It doesn't hurt. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!